Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the Engine Room Podcast in which we attempt to answer the question, how interesting can one guy be talking to a camera about cryptocurrency? If you're one of our existing audience, uh, welcome back. Uh, Bill and Jacob are not here today. It's just me pulling this thing solo for, uh, this is the last time. Jacob is back on Monday. We'll be seeing him. We'll ask him about vacation and all that good stuff. Uh, But we're going to spend today doing the same thing we do many other days. Uh, by rehashing and reviewing some of the uh, most interesting crypto news that's happened since we last spoke. Uh, I've got four stories to go through today. The first two are related to Russia, Ukraine, and the next two are related to NFTs. But let's start with Russia and Ukraine, because what else is there to do (laughs) right now? This is a gigantic conflict that Perhaps it's close to ending. Who knows? Who knows? But what's interesting right now is that Russia and Ukraine have legalized cryptocurrencies at approximately the same time. Uh, This is some reporting by Katerina Mora from The Block uh, talking about Sparebank, which is the largest bank in Russia, is all set to soon begin issuing digital financial assets. People will be able to make transactions on the Sparebank blockchain as early as one month from now. They announced this yesterday, Thursday. Um, Yeah, here we go. So the move to to digital assets comes in the midst of Russia's invasion of Ukraine as the West responds with strict economic sanctions on Russia. Sparebank's announcement speaks of possible benefits to the market. Companies will be able to issue their own financial assets, which will enable them to attract market investments, it states. Now let's look at Ukraine's side of what what it looks like to be legalizing digital assets right now. Ukraine, Russia is legalizing digital assets. It, it, it in my opinion, it seems like to consolidate financial interest and financial power in the region. Ukraine is legalizing uh, uh, digital assets because it needs to resist Russia. It needs resources to resist Russia. So here we are. This is some uh, some reporting from a little earlier this week. Zelensky has signed a virtual assets bill into law legalizing crypto in Ukraine. It seems like a lot of this has to do with the $100 million in crypto donations that the country has received recently. They need a framework for interacting with that stuff legally, and it appears that now they have it. So this is some Coindesk reporting, so we got a lot of bullet points here. Um, Let's see what we can find here. Yeah, here we go. Ukraine has received at least 100 million in crypto donations over the past three weeks from people who want to support its defense and help fund humanitarian efforts. The bill passed through Parliament on February 17th after Zelensky rejected an earlier version that was approved in September 2021. The Ministry of Finance is working on amendments to the country's tax and civil codes to fully launch the market for virtual assets, the statement said. Yeah, I don't know. Just an interesting contrast. So Russia is, of course, invading Ukraine right now, and they are legal. Both countries have legalized cryptocurrency at almost the same time. Russia seemingly doing so in order to amass more power uh, so that its biggest bank, Sparebank, which dominates the region, can put out a CBDC or some other compliant stablecoin. Meanwhile, Ukraine has legalized it so that it can protect itself from Russia. So interesting, uh, always interesting to talk about war and money, guys, war and money on this Friday. So nothing, nothing but happy topics, <laughs> nothing but happy topics. Let's move into NFTs uh, because it's a, a little bit brighter. It's a little bit brighter. Uh, so we have two companies that people have a lot of associations with, a lot of existing associations with that are have announced that they are going to make the move into NFTs. These are GameStop and Meta, also known as Facebook. Uh, now we all I've talked I talk about the GameStop short squeeze from last year quite a bit just because it's such a fundamentally interesting thing to me, and one of the <clears throat> one of the driving ideas behind why GameStop could or should be worth more than it was at the time was that they had all the resources they need to kind of do this grassroots tech digital thing, come in, build your gaming PC, and then NFTs became really hot, and so now there was a bunch of speculation that. Uh, GameStop was going to somehow throw its hat into the NFT ring. Well, speculation confirmed by GameStop. Uh, here we have some uh, some reporting on the block by Island Keeley. GameStop intends to launch its non-fungible token mark, uh, platform 
by the end of Q2 2022. So that's just June, guys. We'll, we, GameStop is saying you will be able to buy NFTs from us before June. The firm announced its plans in a Q4 earnings call and included the plans in its 10K disclosure filing as part of new growth opportunities. According to the filing, GameStop says, as we scale and expand our core offerings, we will simultaneously invest in additional growth, including blockchain, digital assets, including non-fungible tokens, Web 3.0 technology, and new destination formats for our stores. So there you have it. Yeah, just a matter of time. And then GameStop appears to be building this actual vision that a bunch of Redditors came up with years ago, that this could be kind of a, a new kind of shining city on a hill for nerdy gamers to get together. And now there's a crypto component going on. GameStop getting into NFTs. Pretty interesting and exciting. Now, cue the Imperial Death March music from Star Wars, because we have almost exactly the same news from Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. So Zuckerberg was uh, talking at South by Southwest, which is, of course, going on in Austin, Texas this week. And here we have it, straight from the horse's mouth. We're working on bringing NFTs to Instagram in the near term, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg said in a panel at Austin's South by Southwest Festival on Tuesday. And then we have a bunch of reactions to this news, it appears. Casey Newton. Casey Newton, writer of the Verge's platformer newsletter, tweeted that Zuckerberg also said that hopefully in the coming months, Instagram members will be able to mint their own non-fungible tokens within the app. It'll be interesting to see what Facebook does with this. Like it seems to, Facebook seems to play a role in mainstreaming weird, interesting technologies. First, it was social media. Social media nowadays is completely normal. But if you look at what Zuckerberg is spending his time on these days, I mean, just a few years ago, there was a huge thing about how he had built this AI software for helping automate aspects of his home life with laundry and things like this. He was into AI a few years ago. Now he's getting into NFTs. Um, it seems to me that the primary role Facebook plays in business nowadays is pouring gasoline on small little idea fires. And uh, if, if it gets big enough and catches on, well, then boom, there's Facebook's next billion dollar business that didn't exist before. Um, now, let's, let's be clear on the chronology here. Facebook is following in Twitter's footsteps on something like this. So Twitter already has uh, fully functional NFT profile functionality. So if you own some cool NFTs, you can actually represent them on Twitter in, in your avatar. And your uh, avatar will appear in a hexagon to signify that it's not just some ordinary JPEG. Uh, so yeah, even though even though Jack Dorsey is no longer at Twitter, there's still a crypto culture that's alive and well, such that Twitter beat Facebook slash Instagram to making any important moves on NFTs. So we have Zuckerberg saying it's coming. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I am mostly skeptical on Facebook being able to put together a worthwhile metaverse that people will actually want to spend time in. I am kind of skeptical on when I see like buzzwordy news announcements, NFTs and Instagram. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a little old and jaded at this point, but anything to stay relevant, guys. And even if you're number one, you can still be hungry for relevance. Facebook is a gigantic freight ship by comparison to some of these smaller projects we talk about on this channel. Those guys are more like little motorboats that can move fast and make quick changes. When Facebook makes mistakes, they're gigantic and expensive. Ask anybody about Libra, which was, yeah, you taught, speaking of Facebook being into things too early, Libra, if you don't remember, was Facebook's uh, crypto experiment. It was theoretically going to be uh, some kind of compliant response to the US dollar, a stable coin that we would actually, actually use in our daily lives. And it went nowhere for a couple years. So yeah, that, that's, that's what feeds my negative perceptions of moves like this. Anyway, guys, uh, there you have it. There's four stories from today. NFTs, war in Ukraine and Russia, but digital assets are legal there and NFTs are only getting more and more common. I want to thank you for watching or listening to this podcast. We go out on YouTube as well as in audio formats. So whether you're tuning in for the first time or you've been listening since episode one, we appreciate your attention. Do be sure to visit tokenmetrics.com 
where we can help you more uh, effectively walk the line between DGen and Genius in crypto. We are here to help you make money in crypto markets, so be sure to hit the bell uh, button on YouTube. We go live five days a week. Uh, we've got uh, Bill, our chart wizard, to help you figure out what's going on, help you figure out what kind of moves you need to make. And if you're ready to make the jump to a uh, proper token metric subscription, then all the information you need is at tokenmetrics.com. So my name is Dylan Love. Today's Friday. Let's go get that weekend. We appreciate you uh, tuning in and supporting us. Thanks again.